So first things first. I'm going to eliminate the E tier. Because it's just too many f***ing tiers. Second thing second. We get some beats going on in the background. Okay. Pokemon tier list. Did we just start at the beginning? I think we're going to start in the beginning, okay? And I think I'm going to address when I'm biased. Because I will be biased. I'm, I might be biased a time or two here and there. But this is it. Everybody, welcome to a Thundershot Pokemon games tier list. I may have done this tier list before. But fuck it. I'm doing it again. Do we just go up the list? I feel like we just go up the list. Okay, red and blue. The oest G's of OG's. All right, this is where I started, okay? I would have been... When did these games come out? 97? 98 in the States? 97. 98. 99? When did these games drop in the States? I know they released in J did they release in Japan in 97 and didn't make it to the states till Okay. So I didn't get into Pokémon until it had been out for a little while. Right? What's good guys? Aha! Thank you for the 10. Trucking right towards the FNAF 4 playthrough. Let's go. I don't think I got into these games until 98 or 99. Um, because I didn't get in until I was in, I, I had to be in like first grade or something, kindergarten, first grade. Uh, I remember one of my first experiences, I actually went over to Sailor's house, uh, back when we were like, just kind of kids who sort of knew each other. And I found out that he lived close to me. So I went over to, I went over to his house and we were hanging out and he gave me his Pokemon game and or he gave me a Game Boy that had Pokemon on it. It was like my first time playing it. And I just, I did tackle with Squirtle a couple times. His Squirtle against a random thing and it learned Water Gun. And I was like, holy shit, I taught it Water Gun. And like, I remember geeking out about that. That's still like a core memory that lives in my brain. Eventually through birthdays and Christmas, just convinced my parents to get me a Game Boy with Pokemon. And then I started playing. <clears throat> Y'all remember, okay. I'm going to rank this. Okay, I'm going to rank this because it's just full of nostalgia. Uh, OG is in A tier, okay? And here's why. Here's why. Number one, I started in the beginning, all right? If you weren't there in the beginning, you don't know. Not to be a Poke Boomer, but if you weren't there in the beginning, you have no fucking idea what it was like out there. Rogue Blue Jay, thank you for the prime 93 motherfucking months. Appreciate you as always. Um, I'm a, I'm a Poke Boomer, but if you weren't there in the beginning, you weren't there, all right? They made something out of nothing, all right? I can't stress this enough because it'll come up later in later gen conversations. But before this gen, there was nothing. There was no Pokemon. There was no anything, all right? They made Pokemon, and it was the coolest shit in the world. And you caught little monsters, and you raised them. And Gen 1 has a shit ton of bugs and glitches, and some of them got fixed from uh, red and green to red and blue. But the release in the West and all that, but there's still a shit ton of glitches. And you know what? I like some of them. I like the fact that I can surf into statues. I like the fact that Slash with Persian is busted because it crits almost every single time. I like the fact that I can glitch Mew or any other Pokemon in the game. I like that if I want to, I can get a level 100 Gengar before Brock. You know what I mean? But the nostalgia hits. And honestly, you give me half the games on this list and ask me which one I want to replay, I will probably want to replay Red and Blue because I can beat Red and Blue incredibly fast. Uh, and I know the ins and outs of almost every aspect of it. Yeah, speed is tied to crit. And that's why Persian crits almost every time with Slash. So with Persian, you get uh, Stab Slash, uh, which crits almost every time because A, it has a high crit chance, and B, it's fast. Started with Gen 2, but I don't remember it because I was too young. Anyways, chat, what was the first generation you played? How old were you? And basically what I'm really asking is, did you do the thing where you were a kid who didn't know any better? So you mainly had one starter that was 20 levels above all of your other Pokemon at least. Um, and then five other Pokemon that almost did nothing. Also, if you were extra stupid, me, did you have a lot of your HMs on your starter so their moves were ass? Because I probably did. I probably didn't manage to beat Pokemon Red, I think it was. Uh, I, actually, Yellow might have been the first one I beat. I probably didn't manage to beat Pokemon Yellow um, until like my third or fourth try trying to play through these games. Gen 4, and I didn't know how to save my game. Yeah, so I played Red and Blue like once or twice before Yellow came out, before I got Yellow. Never beat either of them. Then I got Pokemon Yellow. 
Uh, and I think the only reason I managed to beat Stay Off My Game. I think the only reason I managed to beat Pokemon Yellow is because they give you the Pokemon, right? So I knew I had Pikachu and then three starters, and they just gave me, you know, good Pokemon, and that was the first time I wanted to train up more than just one Pokemon. Pikachu was still stronger than the others, but I still wanted a Charizard. I still wanted a Blastoise. I still wanted a Venusaur. So that kind of forced me to make a team instead of just having my starter be a monster. Pokemon Yellow also helped me because I didn't catch another Pokemon to help me get through Brock, so my Pikachu is like level 20 by the time I leave, you know, put my fucking mental fortitude to the test. But by the time I get past Brock, my Pikachu is already over-leveled for everything else. <clears throat> I got lost in Mount Moon because I never picked up the fossil, so I had a level, I had a level 40 Blastoise before Misty. Uh, I'm going to get back to ranking. I have a story like that that actually goes along with Gen 2. Secondly, we're, you know what? I'll do this. Pokemon Red and Blue, B tier. Pokemon Yellow, I'll put A tier. Some people don't like that it limits your starter choice, but goddamn, I, lo I love being able to have Pikachu and all the starters. I play through Pokemon Yellow, I grab Pikachu, I grab all the starters, I grab a Nidorino for Nidoking, um, and then I glitch Mew into the game. That's my ideal team when I play Pokemon Yellow. It's so fucking fun to do that. It's so fucking fun to do that. Gen 1 or Gen 3 was my first. I was like 7 or 8, borrowed Pokemon Yellow and Red from someone, then got Emerald and Sapphire and Ruby around the same time. Never saw the point of stat moves. Yeah, the first thing's gone, Growl and Tail Whip. The first thing's gone ever are Growl and Tail Whip because I would use those moves and I'd be like, that didn't do anything. And then I would just put another damage move on. Keep it moving. Okay. Speaking of keeping it moving. Moving right on down the list. Uh, let's go Gen 2. Okay. Speaking of getting lost. Speaking of getting lost, okay, in games... Gen 2, keep in mind, I was still really young when Gen 2 came out, but I remember playing Gen 2 and I got to the lighthouse. First of all, Gen 2, fucking blast. The first time I got stuck stuck in a Pokemon game, not because of a battle, um, I got to the lighthouse and I didn't realize I was supposed to fall through the floor, okay? I thought, like, I, I talked to Jasmine and she's like, you need to go get medicine. And I was like, okay. And then there's no way to leave the room. I thought the things sticking out were walls. And I didn't realize what I was supposed to do. So I remember saving my game and not playing for like a month because I thought I was just stuck in the lighthouse. Like, oh, they forgot to put stairs here. My game glitched. Like, I'm stuck. I can't leave this place. But I, I genuinely got stuck at the lighthouse because I didn't know how to leave. If anybody else has any dumb I got stuck at this part in the game as a kid, to, uh, you know, stories, please feel free to share because I think those are hilarious. But I, I definitely have my own. Um, Gen 2 is goaded, okay? I'll say it. Gen 2 is just the greatest to ever do it. All right. Again, Poke Boomer. If you weren't there, you weren't there. You're not going to know. But they've, to, to my knowledge, they did it briefly in Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver a little bit with Gen 4, kind of. But um, they've never done this in another Pokemon game ever, okay? But I cannot tell you how fucking cool it was being a kid playing through Red, Blue, Yellow, beating the game. Getting Gen 2, getting a whole new region, all new Pokemon, you know, some old ones. Playing through that, beating the Pokemon League, and then you're like, okay, that game was fun. That game was good. You know, I liked it a lot. Music's fucking great. Music's the best. Uh, Gen 2 might be my favorite soundtrack to any game ever. Um, but then Professor Elm calls, just like, oh, I got tickets for a boat. And it's like, okay, and you can actually get on the boat this time? Because in Gen 1, they teased it, but you couldn't actually go anywhere on the boat. But you actually get on the boat, okay? And then the boat actually goes somewhere. And you get off the boat, and where do you show up? I walk off the bridge. I start walking around. I walk left, head to the nearest city. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know where I'm at, right? Start poking my head around. Wait a minute. I know exactly where I'm at. Turns out I'm back in Kanto. Nothing. I don't think I've experienced anything cool in a video game. All right. That's at least at minimum a top five gaming moment for me ever was as a kid walking off, walking off the SSA and after feeling like I just beat the game, realizing I'm in Kanto and then getting to run through all eight gym leaders again. And then go beat Red. Nothing cooler than that. Well, nothing. I don't know if there will ever be anything cooler than that in a Pokemon game again. I don't know if they can do it. They never gave us two regions in a game ever again. Because they knew we were going to be spoiled. They're like, wait, if we work this hard all the time, we'll always have to work this hard. Then they dialed it back. Really need to bring that back going into the region? Yeah. Sonic Unleashed Wii version. I have to move the stick forward twice to run. I couldn't figure that out for an hour. I got stuck on a mountain you had to go to a mine in the city that gets you an HM or an item to get past the mountain. Yeah. I think there's one where you have to talk to a guy in a restaurant and he gives you rock smash or something. 
Watch this when you get the chance. All right, I'll pull it up. We'll watch that later. Okay, moving on. Gen 2 is goaded. All right, I'm a, I'm a Gen 2. I started on Gen 1, but I'm not a Gen 1-er because I have a brain and realized that Gen 2 is the greatest thing to ever grace this earth. All right, I'll say it. I'll say it. D Gen 2 is just him. Gen 2 is just him. Gen 2 is just her big dick energy, big clit energy. Gen 2 is them. Anyway. Here we go. Uh, Gen 3. Okay, this is where we start separating the men from the boys. This is where it stops getting to be so easy. Ruby Sapphire. Not great games. All right, I'll say it. I got Pokemon Ruby, and this is genuinely when I stopped playing Pokemon. I got Pokemon Ruby, played through it, beat it, but I was like, eh. And as a kid, this is where I stopped. That, that's, that was the, I played the shit out of these games a bunch. All three of these, actually. I played the shit out of these games a bunch, but that is genuinely where my, uh, genuinely where... Ruby is a D and Emerald is an A. I was thinking about splitting it by more than a tier. Remember being really young with Crystal, I think? I was fighting Jasmine Steelix with a Kalaba, and I remember losing under my breast saying, damn, my mom heard me. It took my game away. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's kind of funny she even heard me. Yeah. <clears throat> Emerald had to be an S. So that's the thing. I got a hold of ROM hacks when I got to college and I replayed again, but I didn't replay Ruby or Sapphire. I replayed Emerald. Emerald is solid. Emerald is real solid. I only played Gen 2 once or so. I played Gen 3 a lot, then stopped playing Pokemon games. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this right now. I genuinely don't know what to do with this list. Um... Chat, can someone express to me what all does Emerald fix? Does anybody know or can anybody Google or know off the top of their head? What all does Emerald fix that is wrong with Ruby and Sapphire? If anyone could put those into words for me, because like I know Emerald is better, but I couldn't exactly tell you how. The main character gets a little green headband. That's kind of cool. More Pokemon. Better gym fights. Battle Frontier. Okay, I never touched Battle Frontier. I'm not going to lie. Got stuck on Gen 3 fighting Rayquaza trying not to kill it. Yeah, it's crazy. <clears throat> Two teams make the game not have long stretches without story plus Battle Frontier. Eight. Uh... Wallace was the champion in Emerald. Who's the champion in Ruby Sapphire? Steven? Okay. Who is Legendary Battle Frontier? More teams, better gyms, more difficult. The music kicked in and I thought somebody was in the house. I like freaked out. Um, you know what? I'll do this. Yeah. It pains me to put Emerald above original red and blue, but I think this is fair. I think this is fair. Emerald is just such a more enjoyable game than Ruby Sapphire. 50 cow! Thank you for the nine months. How you doing? Thundershot. Rayquaza cutscene, both teams. Okay. Sky Tower is really sick. Okay, moving on from Emerald. <clears throat> Fire Red, Leaf Green. S. The OGs at the top? Only thing, only thing wrong with these games is this is right before Physical Special Split. This is right before Physical Special Split. I actually really want to replay Fire Red or Leaf Green again soon, but I probably wind up doing a ROM hack or something. If Physical Special had been split at the time that these games come out, I'm not kidding. These games would be perfect video games. In fact, if I ever do play Fire Red, Leaf Green again, I might get a ROM hack that just makes Physical Special split, and that's it. Unlike OG Red and Blue, there's no stupid bag limit. Okay, again, product of its time. It was the very first thing to ever exist. Cartridge is very limited, not to dick ride for the Game Boy any harder. But, uh, yeah, the bag space was really gross. That's the other thing I did as a kid, okay? That's the staple of being a kid and not understanding everything about Pokemon or not understanding everything about playing games, okay? 
Your starter is your highest level by like 30 levels. Mine also had any HM move I could fit on it, so it was almost entirely full of HM moves, and then maybe I'd get to keep Flamethrower or something on Charizard, right? Uh, and then the third thing was I didn't know I could put items in the PC, so by the end of the game, your whole you have like three item spots to yourself. By the end of the game, if you don't put items away in the PC for storage, like the SSAN ticket that you don't need anymore and HMs you don't need and shit like that, uh, your entire item bag is full, except you have like three spots for yourself, for Pokeballs, potions, revives, all that shit. Full heals, anything. No, Gen 3 did not have physical special split. That actually started in Gen 4. There's a randomizer tool where I think you can do the special split. Yeah, that would be sick. I would love to replay Fire Red and Leaf Green. Replay Fire Red and Leaf Green, maybe do a Nuzlocke, just regular Nuzlocke. Fire Red and Leaf Green, let chat, you know, get named after Pokemon or something. I don't know. Gen 4 had reusable TMs. I didn't realize that. Okay. Moving up next. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Diamond, Pearl, and then Platinum. I played... I'm going to keep it 100%. I never played Diamond and Pearl. I played Pokemon Platinum through the Poke MMO, which I believe enhanced my experience a lot because it makes the game harder and uh, puts level caps on you and things like that. But I think it was the best possible way for me to enjoy Gen 4. And when I eventually play Gen 5, that's how I'm going to play Gen 5 also. But let me give you guys my experience on this, okay? Keep in mind, I stopped playing at Gen 3. I came back. I played ROM hacks of the Pokemon Mo after that, okay? And I did that after Pokemon Moon released. Pokemon Moon got me back into the Pokemon series, aka almost turned me off of it, but we'll talk about that later. Um, <clears throat> but it did get me playing mainline games like the MMO again. Diamond and Pearl, from what I understand, technically, if I was doing this accurately, I'd put them in haven't played, but I'm just gonna, I've played Platinum, so. From what I understand, Diamond and Pearl, largely not great, okay? You one-shot a Chansey, and you gotta wait five minutes for the thing to die. There are almost no fire-type options, which is part of the reason Infernape is so popular, but Infernape's also just fucking goaded. Am I wrong putting Diamond and Pearl in C? I feel like I'm overloading the A tier here. But we're looking at a Ruby Sapphire repeat, mayhaps. I played Platinum, okay? I don't have nostalgia to Platinum. I also played Platinum in what I believe was the best way for me to play Platinum, where I didn't play the game standard. I played it where it was... Uh, enhanced by the Poke MMO, where my experience was enhanced by the Poke MMO, and I still didn't love Platinum, but again, I did not play it as a child. I didn't play it when it came out. I didn't play it growing up, so I don't really have any emotional ties to it. So I'm not going to lie. I could throw it in B or A. If you were to ask me, like, because in my head right now, I'm thinking, if you were to ask me to replay a game right now, like T-Shot, go play this. I'm telling you, I would absolutely want to replay Crystal first, Fire Red and Leaf Green second, uh, Special Pikachu third, Emerald fourth, probably, Gold and Silver again. Platinum is not even on that realm. I would probably, I would want to play Platinum after playing Red and Blue, if I'm being honest. All the third games made the games 10 times better. Yeah. Well, I mean, Special Pikachu Edition was its own thing. That's like the craziest a third game has ever gotten, with the exception of maybe Black and White 2 for being a completely different game in general. And what's going on, True? Or what's going on, True? Um, but Emerald took steps to, like, make up for Ruby and Sapphire's faults, and I think it filled a lot of holes. Uh, Crystal was just better. I mean, Crystal's not that much different from Gold and Silver. Gold and Silver are goaded, but Crystal is just the definitive version. I think most of my love for Gen 4 is Infernape, Electivire, official, physical special split. You know what? I'll give Platinum A for the Pokemon. We did get Infernape. We did get Electivire. Those Pokemon are fucking goaded. Uh, Giratina's pretty sick. Crystal has shiny Celebi. Does it? I guess it wouldn't be shiny lock. You have to try your ass off for it, but you can't get it. Or you can glitch it, I think. Let's not get hasty. I don't want to overload the A tier. Okay, that's my only problem right now. Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Uh, the remakes of the greatest Pokemon games to ever grace the earth. Fucking go to. There's not even a conversation to be had here. Okay. 
remakes of the great triple S plus if there was a tier for it, okay? Absolutely stacked remake. And I'll get to play the Poke MMO is coming out with Johto. The Poke MMO is coming out with Gen 2 sometime soon. Sometime in the coming months, okay? So the same way I got to experience Platinum, I'll get to experience Heart Gold Soul Silver through that. Because you know they're not using OG Sprite stuff. They're going to be using Heart Gold Soul Silver stuff. That is going to be so fucking sick. I'll probably do that before I do Gen 5. Uh, okay, if I'm being completely honest, did not play black and white, did not play black 2 or white 2, did not play Pokemon X and Y. However, I might come back to these later and let you guys help me rank them. Omega Ruby Ava Sapphire. Dog shit game. You know what? L let, me, let, let me go back. Let me go back to these three. Let me go back to these three right here. I didn't play these. I also didn't look into these games very much. I didn't really watch playthroughs on them. I don't really know a lot about them, okay? I know people love the story in black and white. Um, do you guys think Pokemon Black and White or Black 2 and White 2 is better as a game? Okay. The reason I could throw these three games in the haven't played very easily is because it's not only that I haven't played them. I, I'm just, I'm actually going to replace this with like, don't know much about them. I'm going to rename the tier. Black and White 2 is far better. Really? Okay. Black 2 was rough with Pokemon choices. Black 2 has actual variety in starting Pokemon? Okay. I'm getting mixed signals here. But either way, it seems like Black 2 and White 2 are way better, which is nice. Doesn't always happen. Um, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Our dog shit games, okay? I know about these games, okay? I didn't play them. I've seen playthroughs on them. I've seen video essays on them. I've seen explanations, okay, from people who like them, people who don't like them, okay? Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, dog shit games. Haven't played them, never want to. Because. And this is, I think, when Pokemon started, it's like, it's easiest game in the world downfall. First of all, Pokemon was never hard, okay? It was difficult for me in these games because I was a child, didn't understand game mechanics, didn't understand how to play games in general, okay? As you get older, these games are not supposed to be the most challenging games in the world, and most of them aren't, right? I know how to craft a team where there's basically no regular line Pokemon game that's going to stump me for very long. I think I fainted once in Arceus, which is a whole different beast. And a couple times, like I think I whited out once or twice in Scarlet Violet because you can accidentally find some really overleveled opponents. But for the most part, Pokemon games don't really stump me anymore, right? And they're not supposed to. However, they are also not supposed to be so piss easy that like you can play the game with your eyes closed and walk right through it, right? Um, X and Y had the EXP share thing. You're absolutely right. Omega Ruby, I have a Sapphire took a game that did not have Megas in it and was not designed for Megas and just threw Megas in there because that was the gimmick that year, okay? And it just made it to where you get a Mega early on and then you steamroll the whole game. You don't think, your brain is not on, you buy your repels, you steamroll the whole game. And also, I just don't like the way Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire looked. Like, visually, this is the game that I have the biggest problem with. I think it looks like ass. They were trying to do that thing where they were branching into the 3D world, but they weren't really ready for it yet, and they got rid of the... They got rid of the top-down view. I honestly really love the design in black and white. Uh, the way that the game looks when you're walking around the overworld and things like that. And in battles. Best part was steamrolling. I just feel like I'd be bored forever. X and Y gives you a free Mega Lucario with power-up punch. Yeah. So that's... I, again, I just don't know enough about these games to rank them. But I know enough about Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire to know that I'd never want to play this ship. Black and White 2 are a sequel. They changed the map and pro tag rival and also was the first time we have a timeline story besides red, blue to gold and silver. Gotcha, gotcha. You could turn off the EXP share and RS. Uh, that's sick. Don't care. Not don't care. Does it change my outcome? It's cool that you can turn it off. At least they learned their lesson from this, but it's still like... Anyway, Pokemon Sun and Moon. I played Pokemon Gen, Gen 1 through 3 as a kid. Ruby really turned me off from the series, and also I didn't get a DS um, when the DS came out. So I just, I didn't pick up Gen 4, even though I'm sure I would have played it and loved it had I picked up Gen 4. But Ruby really, like, rubbed me the wrong way. And I kind of was growing out of Pokemon at that time in my life. Came back to it on stream for Pokemon Moon. 
I know you're not a fan of trash bags and vanilla ice cream, but Gen 1 had crab and butterfly and Angry Evo would get a pass. If you go back and change Gen 1, would you remove all those very simple type Pokemon? No, I wouldn't. I would not remove the very simple type Pokemon from Gen 1 because I think Gen 1 needs 150 Pokemon. I think that's a lot of the appeal is it needs 150, 151, whatever you want to say. And again, Gen 1, in my opinion, gets forgiven because there literally was nothing that existed. Okay, we were having, okay, we're gonna do a quick timeout from the tier list chat. This conversation came up in our Discord the other day or like, like a week or two ago, chat. And Gen 5 catches a lot of shit for having bad Pokemon. Gen 5, in my opinion, has a lot of winners, but also Gen 5 catches a lot of shit because that's when they started dropping like shit Pokemon. Like that's when they came out with the garbage bag. That's when they came out with like, whenever the fuck Kling Kling came out. That's when they came out with the vanilla ice cream cone. They're just like, oh, it's an ice cream cone. Now it's a Pokemon, right? Uh, Gen 5 has Snivy. Snivy also sucks. Um, Louie. Uh, how you doing, Sai? So Gen 5 catches a lot of shit for having bad Pokemon, but the counter argument to that is why doesn't anyone give Gen 1 shit for having bad Pokemon? And my answer to that is, again, Gen 1, before Gen 1, there was nothing, okay? When they made Gen 1, they were, like, just creating Pokemon. They were just coming up with, like, they were developing the idea of what a Pokemon is, actually. You know what I mean? Then you get Gen 2 and Gen 3 and Gen 4 where they keep growing on these ideas. And for the most part, like there's some misses in there, sure. But for the most part, these ideas keep getting better and, you know, creative, like, you know, creative in their own right. Gen 5, when Gen 5 goes back to the, oh, this random thing like a bag of garbage is now a Pokemon. It didn't feel like Gen 1 when they were just starting out and they made muck. They're like, what about a sludge pile, right? It felt like by the time they got to Gen 5, they were running out of ideas. To me, right? I'm not an expert. I'm not back there. But um, it felt like they were running out of ideas by the time that they got to Gen 5, if that makes sense. And not like starting ideas like they were with Gen 1. So that's uh, that's it. I'm not saying all of Gen 5 is ass. I'm not even the person who says that like Gen 5 is shitty when it comes to Pokemon. Because some of their Pokemon were good. Uh, or, you know, some, you know, some really solid picks. Gen 5 had the worst line of starters in history. Killer Dragons, though. Snivy and Chespin are the worst starters, not grass starters, the worst starters. It's me, I'm Gen 5 hater. Hey, Omega. Um, I, unironically, Gen 5 is bottom tier for their starters. I genuinely love Chestnut. Chestnut was Spiky Shield. I think it's just Spiky Shield as a move. That's probably why I like him so much, but I do like Chestnut. I'm a sucker for a lot of grass starters, though. I really love Torterra, too, from Gen 4. He's never getting picked because Infernape is right there, but I really love Torterra. Oshawa is goaded. Duwat is probably the coolest second evolution to ever exist. Samurott, remarkably mid. That, that's kind of what sucks about that line. Is Oshawa's really sick. Duwat, again, might be my favorite middle Evo ever. Samurott is just incredibly mid. And for starters, because starters are typically cooler, he's like bottom mid tier. We could do another starter tier list after this if y'all want. I'll do another starter tier list after this if you guys want. But anyway, so that's the whole Gen 5 to Gen 1 argument. Back to where I was, okay? I've done a starter tier list before. It's on YouTube. I think you guys can just go click it, by the way. No, I, I, I would, but I don't just want to redo content because I've absolutely done a starter tier list before, and it's on YouTube. Um, With Gen 9 added, let's go. Anyway, I played Gens 1 through 3 as a kid. Stopped, started YouTube, did a lot of ROM hacks, some really fun ROM hacks. Uh, bought a 3DS capture card for like 600 some odd bucks um, when Sun and Moon came out. And I was like, this is the game I'm going to get back to the series in. Because X and Y looked okay. And people are hyped for Sun and Moon. So this is going to be it. The starter or the, the legendaries look cool. Sun and Moon's going to be the one. I'm going to get back into Pokemon. Uh, like mainline Pokemon games on stream with my community with Pokemon Moon. I played Pokemon Moon. Pokemon Moon fucking sucked ass. If there was a triple F minus tier below D, that, that's where Pokemon Sun and Moon would go. Pokemon Moon was one of the worst games I've ever played. And I'm barely kidding, all right? Every Pokemon you catch in that game is slow, which means that you can't run away from wild Pokemon battles because your Pokemon is always slower than whatever you're facing, okay? So what do you do? You buy repels. Guess what? Repels don't matter because every single route you traverse has... Uh, unskippable Pokemon, unskippable wild Pokemon battles on them. Whether it's some rustling in a bush or a bird flying above you or some point in a cave that has rustling with a wild Pokemon you can't go past. So you buy repels and they don't do anything either. 
Absolute fucking dog shit. Moon was one of the worst things ever. Not to mention the entire first fourth of the game. The game is four islands. The first island is all a tutorial. Tutorial island. They never let go of your hand in that fucking game. The hand holding never ceases. Pokemon Moon is one of my worst Pokemon experiences ever. Meaning Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, also fucking ass. Okay? You know what? We're gonna have... No, this has to be done. This ha We're putting the tier back in. Need a color that properly expresses my hatred. Oops, didn't mean to. Hold on. Hold on. You go back. Spice it up. You. Fucking ass here, okay? Get down here where you belong. Jed Seven traumatized this man only because it was so fucking awful. Only positive of that game was defending your championship of the Pokemon League. It had some good mons, too. They were just slow as shit. I like the Sidui. I like the Sidui a lot. There's a couple mons in Gen 5. Wishy Washy was cool. You know, I think that's where we got, uh, isn't that where we got Mudsdale? Mudsdale, Mudsdale fucking carried me in Violet. Even in raids. Thunder made me like the Sidui. Okay. So here's my Pokemon experience, okay? Pokemon Go comes out. And I can't really play it because the area I lived in when I lived in Missouri. I walked out of my house. I was in like a cul-de-sac. I walked up the street. I could go left, which went to like a little loop that turned around and came back. And I could go right, which led to a highway. Which means where I lived, I could not walk anywhere to anything to play Pokemon Go, really. So I couldn't play Pokemon Go much, but also Pokemon Go was very, very microtransaction heavy. I remember trying to play Pokemon Go. I ran out of Pokeballs, so I had to buy with real human money Pokeballs. And then I, I went to go catch a Pokemon and the game glitched. I didn't keep the Pokemon and I lost the Pokeball I just bought and paid for. So Pokemon Go had a very bad taste in my mouth in general, right? Because A, I couldn't play it, play it, and B, it was microtransaction heavy, and C, it was a broken pile of garbage. Then they start advertising Let's Go. After I already hate Sun and Moon. Then they start advertising this game, the next game in the line. Pokemon Let's Go. Okay? I am an elite level hater of Pokemon Let's Go. On paper, this game looks like it's going to be the biggest pile of dog shit to ever grace this earth. Right? I'm trying to think. Yeah, Let's Go came out after Sun and Moon. Um, it was... It was made to get more people to download Pokemon Go. It was made to make you go outside and play Pokemon Go, which I already couldn't do and already didn't like. And the whole existence of it, like you had to motion control throw a Pokeball. They got rid of experience from Pokemon battles. There was no point in battling wild Pokemon. They made it all about catching Mon. You were going to have to catch like 50 Mon. On paper, this looked like the worst thing ever, and I was already a certified hater. I hated this game up to and through the release of Let's Go. And then I watched streams of it and people play it and like, they were having fun. All right. All right, I'll buy it. I'll poke around. I'll buy it. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll apologize to chat for all the hating. And you know what? I'll say, let, I'll experience it for myself. Turn the game on. Play it. Start catching. Realize the shiny hunting aspect of that game. Realize I can run around on a Snorlax or my Machamp can carry me or my Charizard can fly me around. When I tell you, in my history of playing... I've been playing games since I was two years old. In my history of talking about games, playing games, talking about games on the internet, having conversations about games with Twitch chat, tweeting about games, I have never in the history of the world been more wrong than I was with Let's Go. Let's Go was fucking insane. And I don't get... People who actually played it, I don't get the haters. Okay? Let's Go was goaded. I would replay Let's Go. Not in a heartbeat, but I, I would replay Let's Go with no qualms, okay? You get to run through Gen 1 again. Kanto, okay? The OG. We all know where we came from. Pokemon Follow You, which is something people bitched about for years, by the way. Ever since goddamn Gen 4. Heart Gold Soul Slayer, this motherfucker. People have bitched for years. Oh, just please put Pokemon Following You back in the game. They give you that in Pokemon Go. In fact, they do you one better. You can ride around in your Onyx. Ride around on your Rapidash. Whatever the fuck you want. Coolest shit of all time. 
But what got me hooked was the, uh, first of all, you go through, anytime you go through Kanto again, it's fine. I'm not really bitching about going in, uh, going through Kanto again in any game ever, right? But you get through that and then you get to the shiny hunting. And the shiny hunting was so fun because for the first time in a Pokemon game, you could actually fucking do it and it wasn't a nightmare. For the first time in the history of a Pokemon game, you could actually go out of your way to shiny hunt and it didn't suck complete fucking ass. I don't know if there were shiny hunting methods in Gen 5 or 6 or ORAS. There were shiny hunting methods in Sun and Moon, but they were awful. They were a part of a bad system that shouldn't have been in the game anyway. Let me go back to hating on Pokemon Moon real quick. The Pokemon will call for help. You guys remember when I was bitching earlier about how you can't run from wild battles because every Pokemon in that game is slow as shit, so all the wild Pokemon outspeed you somehow? That's step one. Step two is the fact that you can't buy repels to get away from those Pokemon so you can avoid them in the first place. That doesn't exist. Uh, they weren't technologically advanced enough to have the open world like Arceus has. We'll talk about that later so you can avoid Pokemon altogether. So when you get into these forced wild Pokemon battles anytime you walk from one route to the next, you go to, you go to beat the thing and it calls for help. The little piece of shit will call for help. So it calls one or two of its buddies. So then you beat two more and then the last one calls for help. Two more show up. So you get locked in these infinite battles that suck ass forever. That's also how you're supposed to shiny hunt in Pokemon Moon. If you let them call for help like 40 times, the shiny odds go up or some shit. Worst thing, of, worst in the history of games. Worst shit of all time. Pokemon Let's Go fixes that in its own way because the way that you shiny hunt Pokemon is you just catch the same Pokemon over and over again. And after you catch a Pokemon 28 times, the shiny odds are boosted. And then Pokemon Let's Go also introduced the best feature Pokemon has ever came up with. Okay, I'm going to say it's more important than Mega Pokemon. Having Pokemon spawn in the overworld. No more random encounters, okay? You don't walk into a bush and randomly get startled by a Pokemon. You don't walk in a cave and every tile step is a chance to run into a Pokemon. You walk into a cave and you see the Pokemon. You walk next to a bush, you see the Pokemon. If you want to interact with it, you run up to it, okay? If it's shiny, you don't miss it. You run up to it, right? That's the best feature Pokemon. That's the best feature that's ever come to Pokemon. It got introduced to us from Let's Go. The eggs in Gen 7. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember the eggs. Let's Go Pikachu Eevee is fucking goaded, all right? Gave us the best thing we've ever gotten in Pokemon, and thankfully that carried into future games. Pokemon Sword and Shield, all right? Not to be long-winded here or anything. Pokemon Sword and Shield. Let me tell you what we're working with. Technically speaking, again, I have not played Sword and Shield, but it's more in the ORAS element where even though I haven't played Sword and Shield, I know enough about Sword and Shield. I've seen playthroughs. I've seen video essays. I watched the trailers as they came out because... Moon left a bad taste in my mouth, but with Pokemon Go, we were up. Pokemon Let's Go. And I was an advocate for if Pokemon Sword and Shield has wild Pokemon the same way that Pokemon uh, Let's Go had Pokemon, I was going to be on board. If I don't, if I can avoid random encounters, if I could run around. Chipwright Skylark, who hurt you? Are you okay? Um... My man is upset, and I barely started talking about the game. Anyway, so the way that the Sword and Shield data unfolds is they announce the starters. I actually genuinely love the whole Sobble line. The Sobble line is really cool to me. Um, Score Bunny's final Evo looks like a secondary Evo. Uh, and Grookey's final Evo is fine. But I genuinely really love the Sobble line in general. I remember when they revealed them to us. Like, that still sticks out in my head. So Sword and Shield is like, whatever. It's kind of on my radar. And then... As we start getting more news for Sword and Shield, first it's like, okay. There is no... I barely care about Sword and Shield. You're really hung up on this. Anyway. Uh, as we start getting more news for Sword and Shield, come to find out they've removed the National Dex. For the first time ever you will not be able to get every Pokemon on a Pokemon game. They just delete the National Dex. Uh, they say that the reason they deleted the National Dex is because they were going 3D, and they didn't have time to upscale and redo every single model, but they were redoing every single model that was in the game. So that was a defense for it. It's like, okay, they're removing Pokemon from the game, but it's because they have to work so hard to make new models for the 3D one. Um, so it is what it is. Data miners crack into it, find out that is a huge lie. These are the exact same models. They're not really upscaled or anything. They haven't redone them in any facet. They just removed these Pokemon because they didn't want you to have every Pokemon in the game. Come to find out later, the reason they did that is because they want to sell those Pokemon back to you as DLC. 
So we find out that they're removing Pokemon from the game. They're going to sell them back to later's DLC. Uh, from what I understand, the game is piss easy. Bottom line, Sword and Shield never looked appealing to me, and I never got it because it didn't look fun, and I don't think it would be fun if I played it. What saved the game, I think, the reason this isn't in fucking ass tier, is because while the raid system was apparently not that good, I have a lot of friends who I know kept playing the game after they beat it because of raids. Um, people kept playing the game because of raids. Like, I think Nos was going for, like, a shiny Reggie Gigas off a raid or something like that. Uh, but the raid system was something. It was there. It was something they were trying. Frozen Tundra raid dens are cool. The game got big improvements. I see where they removed Pokemon, but me yeah, so that's the problem is that it didn't get big improvements. Okay, Pokemon had me on a fucking ripcord for a while. I like the whiplash I got from game to game in Pokemon was so nuts. I didn't buy Sword and Shield after doing a bunch of research on it, and I'm really, really glad I didn't because I would not have liked that game. Uh, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I did one stream of this shit and put it down because it was slow and I did not have any fun with it. I'm also going to lob that one in D tier. All right. This is just me being as real as I can. I thought that I thought this was going to be the one. Let me tell you why this. Let me tell you a reason. Let me tell you what isn't a reason that it's in D tier. Let me put it that way for Diamond and Pearl. Okay. I loved the art style. I love the overworld sprite because they genuinely one to one to Gen 4. Okay. Like the way Gen 4 looked in its top down sprite view, they just turned that to modern graphics. People yelled at it for being Fisher Price, which it's fucking Pokemon. People yelled at it for being Fisher Price. I, the way that it looked visually, I love that. I love that so much more than Oras. It's insane. Uh, the way that it looked. Everything else, they didn't really do anything. If they just remade Platinum, it would have been perfect. Yeah, they could have just remade Platinum, but then like gave it, you know, two different lines of Pokemon or something. You know, just barely twisted it, but they didn't. They remade the worst games. Uh, I did one or two streams of that and I put it down then I stopped because the game was just not holding me it was still slow you know modern Pokemon nothing crazy to get me hooked on it downscaled the skill requirement to get through the game yeah it was all just it all felt like a aside from visually it all felt like a step backwards but again visually love that because it did the same thing Fire Red did you know what I mean like if you look at the jump from Pokemon Red to Pokemon Fire Red it's like the same thing from Gen 4 to Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl so visually, I love the way that that looked. Everything else kind of sucked. I like the biomes they added to the underground. We dicked around in the biomes a little bit. I remember doing that. People called for Gen 4 remakes forever. I remember some people saying they should skip Gen 3 remakes so that way they can make Gen 4. And then we got that, and it was a pretty big letdown. So again, the whiplash I get from these Pokemon games is just astounding. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Some people argue it shouldn't be a mainline game. Or it's not a mainline game. And maybe they're right. Because uh, it start the Legends series. However, I am dying for a more for more Legends game. Acknowledging that it is largely imperfect. Legends Arceus is goaded. Okay. Acknowledging the fact that this game, if it's like for a Pokemon game, it's an S. For a Game Freak game in the modern era, it's a hard S. If I was ranking it on an actual game scale, it can't achieve that because the game visually looks like dog shit. Uh, Hardware-wise, runs like dog shit. Uh, still has a bunch of glitches. Still very, very empty. Okay? But for what it was, for what you could do, first of all, they brought back the Let's Go mechanic of fully being able to see the Pokemon in the wild, right? You don't really have to fight a Pokemon you don't want to fight. You see something in the wild, you go to it. You see something in the wild you want to avoid, you run around it. That's the whole concept. In fact, a lot of times you were running for your life because the Pokemon in this one could see you. That was so sick. Suck brick, kid! That was so sick. Oh, I almost have the shiny charm in Legends Arceus. I don't think I ever actually got it. But again, shiny hunting, goaded. I'm, a big, I'm such a big shiny hunter when it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, Tom Terminator, thank you for three months. Appreciate you. RCS needs to be on a better console than stocks. But yeah, they did try to kill you. Cleaver is sick. The uh, giant mon you fight, like the whatever the fuck they're called. RCS is the Gen 4 remake we should have gotten. Yeah. Speed style or, speed style or power style was okay. That is another issue with, with RCS, I will say. 
It felt like the calculation in move damage on Arceus was really, really off. Something about the way that they calculated Pokemon move damage was insane. Because I could be like 20 levels up. I got a first try Shiny Charmander. Did I? In Arceus? I remember getting a uh, Chimchar really early. Not having abilities was interesting, but uh, anyway, the way that they da uh, calculated damage in Arceus is really weird. Because I could be like 20, 25 levels up on a Pokemon and hit it with a move that should kill it in any other game ever. And they would live with like a quarter health. That was like a consistent in Arceus. You could fight a Pokemon you were only you were only down a couple levels to and then like you wouldn't do much damage to him. I don't know. It was weird. It was weird. It felt like levels didn't matter. Levels mattered a lot less. It was really strange how, however, damage was calculated. It's like they were on a rubber band almost. Where the further away you you got in level, the less it mattered over time. Like like a bracket system or something. It was weird. That being said, Arceus is crazy. I'm really really looking forward. I need a sequel to both these games. Okay, this is my biggest problem. I wish Game Freak would go on a three year rotation. And I'm not kidding you. If I'm if I'm head of Game Freak right now, looking at my own best interest at heart, and not necessarily interest of getting the company the most money because they fucking have enough. We're going on a three year rotation, okay? Scarlet and Violet comes out this year. Uh, we get a new Pokemon Let's Go next year, and then we get a new Legends game the year after that. Or maybe a two year rotation, but between the three games, right? So it's every like nine months or so. You know what I mean? But I need a mainline game in rotation, I need a Let's Go in rotation, and I need an Arceus in rotation every single time. Fuck remake. We don't need to remake Gen 5. Gen 5 is fine. Gen 5 will be fine. Port it to the Switch. Port Gen 5 as is to the Switch. It'll be fucking great. People will love that shit, all right? Focus on that rotation. Let's go Togepi and... Uh, let's go... So you either call it Let's Go Johto. I was thinking Let's Go Eevee on Espeon. Eevee on. Uh, Espeon Umbreon. Could be an option. What's going on, Boppin? Legends Kieran would be best. So that's the thing. So Legends, the rumor was they were going to announce Legends of the Burn Tower, which they didn't. But the rumor was Legends of Burn Tower, which would be Gen 2. Because here's the thing, right? When you look at regions that have a past that you can go off of, there's the Great Pokemon War. Uh, Gen 5's got something. I think Gen 6 was the Great Pokemon War. Or flip that around. I might have that flipped. Uh, and then Gen 2 has the whole Burn Tower fiasco. Kanto doesn't really have a past, to my knowledge. Right? So Legends Celebi would go hard. Uh, Legends whatever the fuck Gen 5 is would go hard. Legends whatever the fuck Gen 6 is would go hard. I don't know how they do a Legends Kanto if they go for that route. Um, no, Mewtwo wouldn't work because Mewtwo was made around the same time Pokemon Red happens. Mewtwo isn't this crazy legend from the past. Mewtwo is they used Ditto to try to clone Mew and it didn't work. But as far as I'm aware, Kanto doesn't really have anything in the distant past. They didn't talk about that. They didn't establish that when they made Red and Blue. They established that really heavy with Gen 2, that stuff used to happen here. You know, there was this tower, this tower burned down. You know what I mean? They could just make a bunch of shit up for Kanto. Yeah, 100%. But I feel like they, they'd be better off feeding on what they already have and then filling in Kanto's blanks later. That discovery of Mew and searching for it? That'd be fun, yeah. Alternatively, if again, if they do like Legends uh, Legends Johto, Legends Burn Tower, Legends Gen 5, Legends Gen 6, they could mention Kanto. Like, oh, well, over in the Kanto region, this is happening. And just like drop some lore there and then make it happen when they do a Kanto game. Did they do the war? So here's the thing. I hope they do the war, but you guys got to keep in mind if they do the war, it is not going to be what we hope it will be because it's Pokemon and it's made for kids and it's got, a, you know, a, a G rating on it or whatever, right? So just keep that in mind. Anyway, uh, GameCube games are not a part of this list. I'm just going to throw them in here. They, they would just happen to be on this tier list, but I could actually, I could keep them off. Pokemon Scarlet Violet. Oh, shit. What, were, oh, what are we doing with Scarlet Violet? Scarlet Violet. Again, huge points because it uses the open system, which I hope they just stay with forever now, where there's no random encounters anymore. You don't walk into a bush and get randomly jumped. You don't walk into a cave and get randomly jumped per tile step. Done with that. Hope they stay done with that. Scarlet Violet gets huge points for that. Also, like a lot of the new Pokemon they introduced. Um, balance. I actually thought the game was balanced pretty well. 
I made a team for fun. I still had to, you know, keep my head above water. Not struggle to keep up, but you can still walk into areas where you're overleveled for it. The game is a fake open world game, in a sense. And what I mean by that is the game is open world and you can go anywhere you want to go. But number one, you're gated by how many abilities you have. But number two, even when you can get to areas that you maybe shouldn't go to yet, the Pokemon you're facing are so overleveled that you can't really go there or you're going to get your ass kicked. Scarlet and Violet are so dog shit, but so fun. I hate Pokemon. Agreed. Cosign. 100%. Uh, the raids busted buggy. Ma I'm judging this game based on when it released, by the way. Okay. Maybe not based on where it is now or like when they patch it in six months or something like that. Um, the raids they came out with, the first Charizard raid, Azumarill. People came out with Azumarill's that did so much damage that it actually gave Charizard health back and rubber banded his health back to full because it was a buggy pile of shit. And they didn't know how to do their own system. And that Azumarill raid stayed for like two more very large raids. They still wouldn't patch that shit. However, they found out there was a glitch where people could get more Master Balls. And they patched that within 24 hours. I'm not kidding. Anyway, where was I? Oh, we're talking about Scarlet Violet. Uh, any glitches that were like fun or good for the user, they patched that shit out within 24 to 48 hours. And any glitches that ruin the user experience, some are still in the game today and some took weeks, if not months, for them to patch out. So Scarlet Violet, I agree with Omega. Scarlet Violet was so fun, but so dog shit, right? There's like... I'm torn between B and A, I'm not gonna lie. I think Scarlet Violet is a B game, okay? I think Scarlet... So here's the thing. Scarlet Violet is a B-tier game. However, it is going to get more hours out of me. That's a good way to put it. In all reality, Scarlet Violet is probably a C-tier game. However, because of the raids, because of the updates, because of the DLC it'll get, and I will buy even though it's probably not worth the money, I am going to put more hours into Scarlet and Violet than I am probably most of the games on this list. My Scarlet Violet hours is not going to pass my Crystal hours. It's not going to pass my Fire Red hours. And it probably isn't going to pass my Legends Arceus hours because we played that game a shit ton. Eh, maybe it will. It's not going to pass my Crystal... Uh, not Fire Red Leaf Green. It's not going to pass my Crystal hours. It's not going to pass my Red Blue Yellow hours. It's not going to pass my Emerald hours. But it will probably pass the hours I put into every single other game on this list by a lot. The save file bug? Oh my god. We had a... If you guys see Kittens Malone... Skip, thank you for the 15 months. Uh, if you see Kittens Malone in here, Kittens had caught every Pokemon in the game, done all the post game, had all the raid mon, had the shiny charm, all that shit. He randomly turned his game on and his save file was completely gone. And then they patched the game and now there's a new save file bug and a lot of people are just randomly getting their save files wiped. It's Scarlet Violet, so like I want Scarlet Violet to be better, and it's getting its time out of me, and I definitely had fun with it. But you know what? When Scarlet Violet comes out, or like like when the next line, when the next game line comes out, I am never gonna play Scarlet Violet again. I'll tell you that. Um, I might go back and play Legends Arceus again, even when the next Legends game comes out. You know, there there's a chance I go back. Um, if I go back and play Platinum again, it'll probably either be a ROM hack or on the Poke MMO. But I'm probably not going back to Platinum anytime soon. I'm never turning Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl on again as long as I live unless I need to for, you know, to cross a Pokemon over to another game. Um, never, never play it. Never looking at Pokemon Moon again. I never want to turn on any game in C tier or below. Ever again in my life, I'm never turning on any game. I will probably replay Red, Blue, Yellow a bunch more in my lifetime. I will probably never look at Scarlet Violet again. Emerald's getting replayed. Crystal's getting replayed. Fire Red Leaf King's getting, you know, all this shit's getting replayed. I might be done with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee when the next Let's Go game drops. When you pre-order it, it has to it has a chance to bug every time. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. How will this ranking change? I'm not getting the save file bug. I'm not pre-ordering shit. I'm not turning that game back on. No one knows what causes it, but the Pokemon company is aware of this bug. It's an extremely low chance you get the bug anyway. Yeah, but it's an extremely low chance to royally fuck everyone. Or royally fuck literally anybody. But this is what I'm talking about. They patched the... the When you could get multiple Master Balls, they patched that bug faster than this. And now people are losing their entire save files and Pokemon Company tweeted that they're aware of it. That's it. 
That's it. If if it's if it's fun for the user, it is gone within minutes. If it dicks you over like the Azumarill Raid thing, yeah, we'll get to it when we get to it. Anyway, I'm not pre-ordering the DLC until I know for sure that's not an issue anymore. And also the DLC isn't coming out till late this year. So who cares? That was my that's probably the worst thing with that Pokemon announcement. Number one, they didn't announce anything except the DLC. But number two, when they announced the DLC, it was like, oh, it's coming out near the end of the year. And I'm like, who fucking cares? Talk to me in six months when it's almost out. You know what I mean? I already have a Pokemon starters tier list, so I don't want to do that. You know what I would rank? I don't know if tier list for this exists. But this is my list. This is my list as I presented it. Um, I would rank the gimmicks of every tier list. I could do that. Here, let me say, how do I save this? Is there a way for me to just save this? Oh, save or download. There we go. 